Hey everyone. So we're starting now this sixth day of preparation for our consecration to Mary. And we're going to be looking at the true devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, paragraphs 27 to 36. And today we're going to first of all consider the relationship between our Lord and Our Lady. And then we're going to be looking at the relationship between Our Lady and the rest of us, her other children. So first of all, her maternal influence with our Lord. So we know that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father in glory. He has ascended into heaven. So the question is, is he still Mary's son? And St. Louis de Montfort says, yes. And the reason why we say that he's still Mary's son, even though he's ascended into heaven and has been glorified, is that what is natural is elevated by grace. It's not destroyed. Like what we have, those natural gifts, those talents, those capacities we possess, aren't annihilated when we get baptized, aren't destroyed. They don't go away even when we go into heaven, but rather the glory of heaven brings grace to perfection. So all that is naturally good on this earth is elevated to the supernatural reality. Now in the glory of God, that means his sonship with Mary isn't annulled, isn't suddenly like just canceled, but it's perfected, it's supernaturalized. So he continues to be the son of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that's what St. Louis de Montfort says. He is still the son of Mary as he was on earth. And he maintains submission and obedience of the most perfect of all children to the best of all mothers. So in the same way that he was obedient to Mary here on earth, there is obedience to Mary in heaven. Now we're gonna come back to that in just a second. The motherhood of Mary, however, is not the one is not the one we normally think of, because Mary is infinitely inferior to her son, who is God. So, there is a difference there. Normally, the, there's not an infinite difference. Usually, there is some sort of like this imbalance between the mother and the son. But this sort of infinite inferiority is something extra, unique to that relationship, and so. In certain church fathers, you're going to see something along the lines of them, them saying that Jesus, or even God himself, is subject to the Blessed Virgin Mary. But St. Louis de Montfort says we have to understand that subjection in a different sense. Subjection in that it seems as if she had some power over God. So it's not as if God is like forced to do what Mary tells him but rather he always does it. So it, it's as if there was a kind of subjection or obedience of God to the Blessed Virgin Mary, but it's not actually as if he's being required to do so. He, St. Louis de Montfort wrote, her prayers and requests are so powerful with him that he accepts them as commands. Commands in the sense that he never resists his dear mother's prayers because it is always humble and conformed to his will. So Mary is still Jesus' mother, and she can still influence him, just as she did in Cana of Galilee. You know, she still intercedes for us, and her prayers still have an effect in heaven, just as they had on earth, especially there at Cana. But it's not as if he's required to. It's not as if he's like a grumbling child that has to do what his mother says, even though he doesn't, really doesn't want to. No, that, that's not the situation. And also, it would be preposterous to imagine that, because like St. Louis de Montfort says there, the will of Mary is always one with the will of Jesus. It's never as if Mary wants to go this way and Jesus wants to go that way, and then Jesus has to turn around to go the direction Mary wants to go. No, they always want the same thing. There's always harmonious, there's always a harmonious relationship between the two of them. Now, the next thing, having a devotion to Mary is a sign of true faith. Let's remember that God is our father, and on earth, where we all are, if you are a child, you have both a father and a mother. So it makes sense that in the supernatural order, if we are children of God in a supernatural sense, we're also going to have a mother and a father. And St. Louis de Montfort says just this. He says, just as in natural and bodily generation where there is a father and a mother, so too in the supernatural and spiritual generation, there is a father who is God and a mother who is Mary. All true children of God have God for their father and Mary for their mother. So in another place, he even says it more explicitly in a negative sense. He says, if you, or rather all Catholics who have God for their father, 
have also Mary for their mother. Or if you don't have Mary for your mother, you don't have God for your father, which is what, how St. Cyprian put it. And it's not enough to simply say, yeah, Mary's my mother. I have this sort of nominal affirmation of this uh, relationship with somebody who I call my mother. But it's also necessary to treat her like a mother, to love her like a mother. St. Louis de Montfort says, if they had her for their mother, they would love and honor her as good and true children naturally love and honor the mother who gave them life. In fact, this love for our Heavenly Mother is going to be what distinguishes us, true children of God, from the false ones. St. Louis de Montfort said that an infallible, or sure, a certain, an unmistakable sign by which we can distinguish a heretic, somebody who has false doctrine, an enemy of God, from one of God's true friends, is that a heretic and the hardened sinner shows nothing but contempt and indifference for Our Lady. So they're very strong words, but it's a reality that goes back to the church fathers. If you don't have Mary for your mother, you don't have God for your father. And there's obviously many different nuanced ways that we need to talk about that, but I mean, it is something incredible to think about that importance, that centrality of Mary, the almost necessity of having that relationship with our Heavenly Mother in order to have the relationship with our Heavenly Father. Now, Mary is also mother of the church. The church is, after all, the mystical body of Christ. Jesus is the head, we are the body, or the limbs, or the members, as St. Paul puts it. And although it's not the most popular of uh, images used for Our Lady, it is something which the saints will sometimes talk about. They describe Our Lady as the neck, which is joining Christ the head with us, the members. And through whom all that life-giving uh, you know, we call them now uh, you know, the blood vein, the blood vessels, the uh, all those different nerve ends. Like the the neck is something vital. You you need to have the head connected to the body with the neck. That's something fundamental. And it's a little bit of a strange image, but it clearly presents this role that Mary has of transmitting life to the members. There needs to be that connection between the head and the body, and that connection is the Blessed Virgin Mary. And why is that something necessary? Well, St. Louis de Montfort goes again to the, the natural order. You know, how do things normally work with a mother? Well, when you have a mother who gives birth to a child, the mother doesn't just give birth to the head and somebody else gives birth to the body, but rather you have the same mother who gives birth to both the head and the body. He says, if it wasn't, you know, if there were like two different mothers, one giving birth to the head and the other giving birth to the body, that would be a monster in the order of nature. And he says, in the same way, in the order of grace, the head, Jesus Christ, and the members, all of us, are born of the same mother. If a member of the mystical body of Jesus Christ were born of a mother other than Mary, who gave birth to the head, he would not be an heir of heaven, nor a member of Jesus Christ, but a monster in the order of grace. So once again, that sort of centrality of Mary as necessary, informing us as children of God. If we have God for our Father, we need Mary for our mother. If we are brothers with Christ, if we are members, or rather, if we are members of the body of Christ, we must also have the same mother as the head of the body of Christ. And finally, at the end of this section, St. Louis de Montfort talks about the wonders that Mary will produce in the souls who welcome her into their lives. De Montfort said, when Mary has taken root in a soul, she produces in it wonders of grace, which only she can produce. For she alone is the fruitful virgin who never had and never will have her equal in purity and fruitfulness. Together with the Holy Spirit, Mary produces the greatest thing that ever was or ever will be, the God man. Consequently, he goes on to say, she will also perform the greatest marvels which will be seen in the latter times, the formation and education of the great saints who will come at the end of the world are reserved for her. For only this singular and miraculous virgin can produce in union with the Holy Spirit, singular and extraordinary things. She is the one who's gonna make the great saints that are necessary in order to combat the evils of the latter times. and. 
biblically speaking, we are in the latter times. You know, ever since Jesus ascended into heaven, we have been in the latter times. And so she is forming the great saints, St. Francis of Assisi, St. Athanasius, St. Uh, John Paul II, the great saints throughout history who have combated the evils of their time, the latter times, has all, have always been formed by the Blessed Virgin Mary. So now, confident in this mother's power and intercession and her love for us, let's go to meditate. You can see the meditation there at the link in the description of this video. Follow that. Take 10 minutes or so, personal prayer, you and our Lord, conversing, thinking about the different things that come up in that passage. And let us ask her for that grace to make us great saints that are necessary for the church today as much as ever. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee.